It's great to be here live from Alamosa. I felt like I had to say that, have to be a little bit of a newscaster. But um, we are here today with two very special folks who are going to share their experience um, with endowments. Um, so Max, I wanted to start with you. I was hoping maybe you could introduce yourself, introduce the nonprofit, um, and just talk a little bit about your recent experience with uh, setting up an endowment. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm Max Gibson, I'm executive director and the Local Foods Coalition has been around for 15 years and is working to create a more equitable local food system in the six counties of the San Luis Valley. And our major programs are the Valley Roots Food Hub, which aggregates and distributes food from 110 producers all across the state. Um, we have uh, Cooking Matters cooking classes. We have a policy and assessment arm. Um, and then most important for this conversation is the Rio Grande Farm Park, which is 17 acres right, right in the middle of town. Um, that is on the edge of the Rio Grande River that was originally an elementary school, had a, a number of Guatemalan Mayan refugee families that were growing food there. Um, Chris will talk a little bit about kind of the process of saving that land. Um, but now today it, it has an education center and a commercial farmer incubator program and a public park and trails and is a real gem in Alamosa. Um, and, you know, the, the idea of an endowment was on the table even before I stepped into the organization, um, but it's, it, it's been held up as a kind of a vital way to save that land and, and make sure that long term, as we steward that land, which we have a conservation easement for, um, that kind of regardless of the vagaries of our own funding and programs that might come and go, that we are able to ensure that that land is well cared for and available for public use. I know we were just talking about this. Yeah. Um, can everybody hear us all right? Our, we're good. All our, right. Our windy air conditioning, our, our heat is on right now. Oh. <laughs> well, great. That's um, an awesome um, way to explain your organization, what you do, and, and how you started looking at endowments. Um, so let me ask, um, from your perspective, I'd love if you could introduce yourself first and then talk a little bit about um, endowments, because it's a little bit unusual for a donor to be um, so well-versed in the idea of an endowment and a long-term investment. So we'd love to hear a little bit more from your perspective about what interested you in this avenue for giving back? Great. So um, I'm a Christina Steinberg and I'm a family physician here in Alamosa and I've lived here since 1986. My background um, probably contributed to my involvement with the farm park and the idea about the endowment because um, my family has always been very involved as, when I was a child and growing up, very involved in local community activities as well as um, financial support. And so to some extent, when I'm involved with the farm park, I'm channeling my loved ones, which feels very good. Um, the biggest um, involvement that my father had in my hometown was maintaining open space. And um, after his retirement, that was pretty much what he did is be involved in activities that promoted open space. And to put that in perspective, I grew up in Vail. So you can imagine open space is other than up in the mountains is um, very key because it's extremely dense. So I moved to the valley and just did my thing. And then um, this challenge came along where this property along the river that used to be the school and the schools um, consolidated. So it was basically potential open space and it was um, promised um, by the school board to the local foods coalition if they could come up with the funds which they did um, but very quickly that fell apart and it was going to become it was going to be purchased by and become a um, travel trailer uh, resort resort trailer place uh, you know what I mean you know where you come and you bring your motor home and you stay and you enjoy the valley um, and the problem with that was one we already were getting organized to have this be a farm, which it already was a farm, um, and it was going to be paved. And this, the the person who was going to develop this motorhome park 
was actually selling soil, selling topsoil, which sounded like rape to us. And so it became a legal issue. And in the end, with with mediation and a very really kind of cool legal process, we were able to purchase the land from this gentleman. And once you have struggled and succeeded, you then have this major responsibility. Um, and I feel like that was a huge um, gift to us. So I wanted the farm park to have long-term sustainability as opposed to just day to day, let's do this this year, let's do this next year. So I got involved in the idea of um, being the initial donor for an endowment. And then we had to struggle with how are we gonna do this? And that's where Colorado Gibbs comes in. And we may, we may wanna talk, I don't wanna talk too long, but yeah. um, you know, starting as an individual with just a little bit of financial experience and surrounded by people in a small, relatively poor town who have very little financial experience, it was, it seemed overwhelming that we would finance something and actually manage the finances. And my husband and I already knew about Colorado Gives and what we feel about them is they make donation um, giving easy. Um, they help us do it on Colorado Gives Day, which was just really an act of genius. And then they help us with the paperwork and you know, you get the paperwork back and you're done. It's just so easy. Um, and so when we found out that Colorado Gives actually can, um, can manage an endowment, do the endowment, it was sort of like, yeah, boy, if they make it as easy as they make dope, um, Colorado Gives Day, we're in. And we did our due diligence and we interviewed other options and it was clear that Colorado Gives was going to make it something where we could, we could, we could work on getting donors but we didn't have to manage finances, which are, is not our expertise at all. So we're extremely grateful. That's great. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. And so what I heard was that you were extremely influenced by your family right. and their work growing up and seeing them uh, commit and give back to open space. Um, I heard that you guys solved a challenge and really right. all came together as a community. So you felt really um, dedicated to the cause. And right. then from there, um, you wanted that to last forever. You wanted your work to be, to go on in perpetuity. Exactly. And so came to the conclusion that, you know, an endowment rather than an upfront gift right. made more sense. Um, yeah. I'd love to hear a little bit more about um, the process for you guys. And um, if there's any other feedback you have to other nonprofits, if they're considering um, an endowment. Well, we, we had a series of board meetings. I mean, we, we had extra board meetings in between our normal board meetings to, um, to talk this through. And we, we extended an invitation to, to Dr. Steinberg and a couple other community members that, that had kind of similar levels of involvement. And, um, and we tried things out. We, we did research on Color to Gives and, um, Tim was very helpful, gave multiple presentations. We had presentations from other investment groups. Um, we brought in other local nonprofit that has an endowment of their own with their own kind of internal management structure and just kind of learned about and weighed out what these different options could look like. And it, as Chris was saying, it became very clear very quickly that Colorado Gives was the easiest approach and that Colorado Gives is already kind of a name brand through the nonprofit scene in Colorado. It didn't take that much selling. It was it was a real relief for the board that we weren't going to have to make our own investment decisions every year. We weren't going to have to, you know, manage coordination and communication between multiple boards. Um, that we could just know that it was in a safe place and that we would get looped in when we needed to, and not much beyond that. Yeah, share the responsibility of, of, of managing that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, and as to wrap things up, I'd love to hear from you and from you um, if there's something that you would tell a donor. Um, so from a donor's perspective, if there were things that you could share with them about endowments and why they should potentially invest, what would you say to it? Well, I would say, you know, I would explain what an endowment is. Um, you can give money that is 
spent, you can, you can dedicate it to something that is needed today, or you can think about the future. And you have to explain that the endowment is, you know, the, the money is held, but then the, um, the income can be spent so that, you know, oftentimes with grants, we have a real problem because, you know, most of these nonprofits um, that I'm familiar with in the Valley, they get, they live on grants, but a grant doesn't pay the electric bill. And then they struggle with that. And they're asking for help with the electric bill. Well, if you have an endowment, you've got a, um, a fixed growing, presumably, um, some um, growing with donors and growing with um, the financial world. But then there is that money that is not earmarked for something. You're not locked in. So you can, you know, get new light bulbs and <laughs> you can buy wheelbarrows. Um, and so I liked the idea of that, flex, that having both those things. And I was blessed to have the means to do it. And it's not me that is really donating it. It's my father, Thomas Steinberg. So, yeah. Yeah. And it, it, even in the best of times, grants don't cover everything that we want to have covered at the farm park. Um, but then it's in my mind all the time that, you know, recessions come and programs get shuttered and things change, but we own this land and we have a responsibility to the community to make it available. So this makes sure that, that somebody long-term is there to open and close the gates, pick up the trash, you know, fix, fix equipment that's breaking down. We, at, at a bare minimum, we can keep this space open and, and being used by the community. Well, and in those bad times, that's really when the farm park is, is, is helping the community more. I mean, we have families, we have family farmers and the, and the commercial farmers that um, at times of unemployment have lived off their produce. Yep. Um, and it feels very good that when there are other bad times, which there will be, that resource is there, whether they're selling their produce or yeah. feeding it to their friends and their families. Yep. So. Any final thoughts on endowments, future plans for the farm park, um, or anything else that you wanted to share with our audience about your experience with Colorado Gifts Foundation? Well, I think one of our big challenges is we are beginners in, in, in getting this endowment going and we have plans, but I think Colorado Gives can probably help us figure out the words to use with our volunteers and our community members who will also plan to contribute to the endowment. And um, I think we have a lot to learn about fundraising and I look forward to um, getting some insight about that. Wonderful, yes, certainly. Step one, get the endowment. Right. Step two, expand and start exactly. talking about the endowment. Right. Oh, well, this has been so wonderful. Thank you both for doing this and Thank sharing you. your thoughts and your experience with everybody. How's it